I will cover the Lindemann mechanism for unimolecular reactions today. Uh, unimolecular reactions means we have only one uh, reactant. Bimolecular reactions means we have two reactants, and then we have trimolecular uh, reactions, and so on. And uh, uh, here's a very simple example. H2 absorbs a photon to produce two H radicals. Uh, this may be considered the first order elementary reaction, and the reaction rate is proportional to the concentration of H2 to the power of 1. So reaction rate equals K times the concentration of H2 to the power of 1. This is a simple example. Uh, what if we use heat? We heat it up and H2 absorbs enough energy via collisions with other molecules, overcome the energy barrier, and decompose into two hydro radicals. In this case, we don't know whether it's a first order or second order, unless we know the concentration of H2. If the concentration of H2 is large, it's a first order reaction. If the H2 concentration is small, it's a second order reaction. Because over here you can see the rate limiting step. Here's the collisions between two hydrogen molecules when the concentration of H2 is small. Uh, what about in between? Well, in between it's neither first order nor second order. Uh, we're going to derive this Lindemann mechanism for this uh, reaction right now. To give a more general example, I'm not going to use H2. I'm going to just use uh, molecule A. And then we're going to uh, assume that uh, A gets enough energy to overcome the reaction energy barrier uh, via colliding with other molecules. A collide with another A, and during the collision, energy may be transferred from one molecule to another, and it's possible for one of the two molecules to get uh, enough energy. This is activated A, plus, again, this A. This activated A may collide with another A. It may not be the same A, but it can collide with another A to lose energy. And then to form two deactivated A's. Right? Well, this A can also go through another channel here to form the product. Again, this means activated. This A star has enough energy to form the product. But again, before it can form the can be converted to the product, it's possible for this A star to collide with another A and pass the additional energy to the other A, and then you have to deactivate it A molecules. Because A is activated, it's energized, it's unstable, will apply the steady state approximation to A. Uh, what does this mean? This means the change, the rate of the change of A star is zero. Uh, this is because again A star is unstable, it's activated. The concentration of A star is extremely low during the entire reaction. That means we can assume the change of A star is zero. So, we'll look at this A star. It's involved in this forward reaction. It's produced in the forward reaction here. It's consumed in the backward reaction. So I'm going to put a minus sign here. K negative 1 A star times A. Okay, for the backward reaction, the reactants are A and A star. 
over here is consumed, so another negative sign here. Negative K2 times A star. And we'll assume this is zero using the steady state approximation for A star. If this is zero, we can just uh, get the expression for A star easily. It's gonna be K1 times A squared. And on the bottom, you have K minus one, A, plus K2. And then we'll get the reaction rate. The reaction rate is simply how fast the product is being produced, dP over dt, so it's gonna be K2 times A star. All right, that's the reaction rate. So I'm gonna put the reaction rate here, is K2 times A star. So K1, K2, A star, oh, A squared, K minus one, A plus K2. Uh, this is the rate to law for the unimolecular reactions uh, in which the reactant molecules get energy via collisions. Uh, is this a first order reaction? No. Is this a second order reaction? No. But if A is approaching infinity, all right, it's really large. Large enough that we can neglect this K2 on the bottom. And then R is, get rid of this. We have K1, K2 on top. We have K minus one on the bottom. We get a first order reaction, A to the power of one, first order. What if A is very small? A is very small, small enough that we can neglect K minus one times A, and then we have this top part divided by K2, it's gonna be just K1 A squared. Well, what's the physical meaning of this? Very simple, if the concentration of A is very small, uh, the collision is the rate limiting step. So this part is the rate limiting step. Okay. It's very hard for a molecule A to find another molecule A. So this is a rate limiting step, and we know how fast this is. It's just K1 times A times A, so it's K1 to A squared. Now what if uh, this A approaches infinity? This is so-called a high pressure limit. Um, assuming A is a, a gas phase molecule, so high pressure, high concentration, uh, when A, the concentration of A approaches infinity, well, the collision is no longer the rate limiting step. Instead, the second step is the rate limiting step. And if uh, we have a very high concentration of A, we can assume that this two products and this two reactants are at equilibrium at any given time. Right. And why is that? Again, there are so many collisions. The pressure is high, the concentration is high, we have a lot of A's and A stars, and we can assume that uh, they uh, reach this reactant side here and this product side here reach equilibrium. And what's the equilibrium? That is, well, just K1 times A times A, that's the forward reaction rate here, equals K negative one, A star times A, that's the backward reaction. And they are, you know, very close to each other, okay? Pseudo equilibrium. And then we simply just do this, A and A cancel, we get the expression of A star. A star is uh, simply just uh, K one over K minus one, Again, this is uh, at high pressure limit, high P limit. Well, when we have this expression, again, how fast is the product produced? 
it's just the K2 times A star and equals K1, K2 over K minus 1 times A. This is a first order reaction. Great law, you can see uh, it's 2, uh, this is A1, and this is A2 power 1. So you, you get the same result here. First order, only because when the pressure is high, or when the concentration of A is very high, this step is the rate limiting step. And also we can assume the product side and the reactant side of these two reactions, forward and backward, are at equilibrium at all times because of the very frequent collisions between this A and this A, between this A star and this A. 